Good morning, everyone. I am Mary Hall Cham, statutory vice chair of the uh, Washtenaw Democratic Party. And I have the honor and the pleasure to introduce our current Madam Chairman of the Michigan Democratic Party. Lavora has Southern roots, but she is also has a heart of gold. She knows the civil rights movement. She knows executive leadership. She knows how to lead. She is a lead her, and I want you to understand her. She was elected as the Michigan Democratic Party chair, the first African-American woman in 2019. I want us to put her back in that position in 2021. That is how we now have Biden and Harris and the first African-American woman and Asian vice president elect. I could say a lot more about Lavora, but we need to hear from her. And so I am going to say, thank you, Madam Chair. Lavora, please come on. Good morning. Thank you so much, Mary, for that very kind introduction. Dana, Debbie, my sisters, thank you for your words and for all that you've done. I, I, I know that you all share with me the, the horror of what we just went through. So I had some talking points for you this morning. I, I have tossed them aside um, because it, it it feels like a different kind of conversation and frankly, a little bit of group therapy for me to be with you this morning, um, to be with my friends and, and my people. Um, I watched what was happening on Wednesday with my 18 year old son. I think most of you have probably heard me talk about Marshall um, who voted for the first time using the Washtenaw Dems guide to help him um, <laughs> this time. And, 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 then I, and then we watched what happened and some of the questions he asked are the same questions all of us are asking. And one of the things he said to me as he watched some crazed individual sit at the seat of our speaker of the house, That's he true. said to me, mom, I would have never made it that far. This is my kid, right, this is my baby. And he knows that he would have never made it that far. Um, Debbie, I'm so thrilled that you're safe. It was the weirdest odd world where I am texting our members of Congress just to say, I'm thinking about you and I'm hoping you are safe. Like what world are we in that that's something that you have to do um, to, to, you know, Andy Levin sent back just emojis and I'm like, is that good or bad that there are just emojis, Andy, right? But every, everybody was safe. Um, you folks led in a way that I am so very proud of. You know, many states are not as lucky as we are to be led by terrific individuals like this. Um, so proud to be part of this democratic family here in Michigan. And Dana, badass Dana Nessel, um, who as she promised all of us, will sue anybody who needs to be sued and will put anybody in jail that she can put in jail. Um, so proud that we elected her in 2018. And all of this is a reminder that no matter how hard it is, we have to remember that the work we do as the party is so important. Because imagine all that has happened to us in 2020 without Dana Nessel, without Jocelyn Benson, without Gretchen Whitmer, without Debbie Dingell. Imagine. So we have to start over again, right? We have to build ourselves and be ready for 2022 because what we have seen from these folks is that they are not finished. They believe that their next battle, once they, once they continue this battle where they think they're gonna somehow manage to keep their president in place, they're gonna come after our women here in Michigan and they're gonna come hard and they're gonna come from all over the country because they believe that we here in Michigan, and they're probably right, stop them from keeping their president. And therefore their retaliation is to try to get these women out of office and to take the power that they have assumed to push back hard on a crazed, deranged man in the White House and try to use it to push back on the intelligent, sane man we're about to put in the White House. So our jobs, as important as I told you they were in 2019 and 2020, are just as important in 2021 and 2022. So I, I, I try not to spend a lot of time dwelling on the fear and the pain and the anger and spend time focused on making sure that we're ready for what's coming at us next. This is going to be hard work that we're going to do together. And I have to say, you guys, you guys in Washtenaw County are the rock of the Michigan Democratic Party. We know we can count on the work that happens here in Washtenaw to help lift folks up all over the state. Um, I was on a call with some folks from Northern Michigan who asked me, where do we look for best practices for how to, how to set up a county party to help elect folks locally? And I said, 
Look at Washtenaw. And they're like, you're from Washtenaw. I'm like, yeah, I am. But also, <laughs> look at Washtenaw, right? Look at Washtenaw. <laughs> so I'm going to be looking to you guys to help me spread the word about how to take a county party and actually use it to build something strong and powerful that helps elect folks up and down the ballot. Because you heard what Dana said. So much of what happens locally is, is impacted by these local elections that, frankly, folks don't pay enough attention to. You guys do but others do not. And um, we have to work hard to build parties all over the state that are ready to take on local elections, that are ready to, to place people on the ballot and then fight for them to win all over because that's how we get at least some control and get at least some ability to push back on the madness. And that's what it is, it's madness, on the madness that has filtered up through the Republican party. I was uh, doing an interview with our friends at the Detroit News yesterday. Um, and one of the questions I was asked was like, what does this say about the current state of the Republican Party and what should they do? And my, my first answer was not my job to tell the Republican Party what to do. But this is a, a reckoning for them. And they will either decide that they are a viable political party here in this country and in this state that really wants to have decent conversations with voters about what matters in voters' lives, or they're seditious and they're rebels and they wanna take down the country. And if they can't make that decision for themselves, then we have to help the voters help them make that decision. They, this cannot stand. This cannot be one of the two major parties in our state, in our country, state and country, believes that it is their job to tear down our government, believes it is part of their job. Like Dana told you, the Republican Attorneys General Association donated money to that event that turned into an insurrection. Republican attorneys general, Republican members of Congress stood before that group and encouraged them to do what they did to our House of Congress. Like, like the things that we know about the way the Republicans not, not responded to, because they haven't responded well either, but we, exactly, someone's in the, in the chat, insurrections are pre-planned. That's that's exactly right. They planned this. They were part of the planning of this. This wasn't a surprise. Everybody knew they were coming, apparently, except maybe the law enforcement. Um, we all knew this was going to happen. I was having a conversation with someone in D.C. who said, you all showed us in Michigan, and they showed us in Michigan, what was going to happen in D.C. What they did here in Michigan, their attack on our capital, their threat to kidnap and murder our governor, was the beginning of this. It was a small scale version of what they plan to do in DC and what they're going to continue to do. I, I, you remember how we all worried about Barack Obama? Remember how we worried in 2008 about him marching himself from the Capitol to the White House? Like I, the conversations I had with my mama about like, like she was so afraid, I was so afraid, what are they going to do to this man? We got to be afraid for Joe Biden now. Like these people are not finished. And it scares me to death to listen to the Attorney General of Michigan tell me that she doesn't have confidence that all of our law enforcement is gonna step up to fight back this attack on our government. That scares me to death. And the only thing I can do, the only thing I know how to do that might help this is win some damn elections. That's what I do. So that's my part in this. Is I, I pledge again to all of you that this state party will support all of you all over the state in your efforts to win some damn elections. Let's get some better people elected here to force the people that we entrust with our state and our nation to do a better job protecting our state and our nation. And then at the same time, let's just be good humans. Let's show our children what a difference it is when Democrats are in charge and what a difference Democrats are compared to the Republicans. Let's continue to be good humans to each other, to be good humans to others. I can't quite get with my friend Debbie to reach across the aisle and have a conversation with them. Someone suggested to me, maybe you call Laura, I'm not calling Laura Cox, that's just not gonna happen. But <laughs> I will be a good human. I will do my best to be a good human and I know that you will too. Um, I'm happy to take questions, guys. As I said, I tossed out my talking points, but if there are things that you wanna hear from me, please ask me about them. Um, I, am, I am here with you. I am so proud to be a, a Washtenaw Dem. I'm so proud to be a Michigan Dem along with our terrific elected officials. And let's pledge ourselves in 21 and, and 22 to get more Michigan Dems elected and see if we can 
continue to turn our state and our country around. Madam Chair, I'm going to uh, kick off real quick here if I could. I, I'd like to first of all remind everybody that the, um, the state MDP convention is on February 20th, and that is where uh, we will reelect Lavor Barnes if, uh, if enough people show up and, and vote. So in order to vote in that convention, you need to become an MDP member by January 21st. So please uh, freshen up your MDP membership. Uh, before January 21st, if you wish to vote in that convention, it's very important. We will also be choosing leadership of our congressional districts, et cetera, and state central members and those types of things. And, um, you know, we, we need to make sure that we bring this leadership team back. Um, one question that I have to, to kick, kick things off, and this comes from uh, the folks in our precinct organizing committee, is that, you know, this week we watched, um, I won't say that Stacey Abrams single-handedly won Georgia, but boy, it sure looked a lot like she had a major role to play, uh, the major role to play. Uh, I know that you have worked with her because she has, uh, Fair Fight has spent money in Michigan uh, for a 2020 election. Um, what can we learn and is there a playbook uh, that was written by, uh, uh, by Stacey Abrams and her team um, that we can leverage here in Michigan to, uh, to win even more elections? It's a you, really, you. really good question, Chris. You know, St. Stacey, first of all, St. Stacey is what I think we should all start calling her now. Um, she's amazing. And the work that she did with Fair Fight, like, who have we ever seen take, take a loss? And it wasn't a loss, actually. They stole that election from her and turn it into this. Um, I think I saw someone with a meme that's like the, the, the thing you did. You know what happened to you? You stole an election from Stacey Abrams. And that's what happened to you. Um, so yes, there is absolutely a playbook. And here's the thing that I, I've, I've learned several things from Stacey. Number one, the voter protection team that she helped us build. Um, just so you all know, we will continue to have a voter protection staff at the Michigan Democratic Party full time. Um, two staffers, a, 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 a director and a deputy director will stay on um, year round cycle to cycle. Um, and that's a, in large part because of the work that Stacey Abrams did. But the other thing that you see that Stacey and the team in Georgia has done is outreach, particularly in rural Black Georgia. These conversations that they started having right, right during Stacey's campaign and continued to have are so important. And they are the conversations that I think um, many pundits thought were a waste of time. Many pundits thought that there was no way to move that vote and that all you needed to do, and you, we've all seen this, is do turnout in the Black community and, you, right, and that's the best you can get. What Stacy has proven is that if you do more than just turnout, if you do voter registration, if you do voter education, if you have conversations with voters about the importance of their vote, the importance of their participation in the civic process, you can increase that participation, you can grow the number of people who are voting, and you can win elections. This is a big deal. And it's a big deal because you all have heard me talk, I get a little frank sometimes, you can't turn out rural black voters with white kids in Pennsylvania, right? So one of the things that we talked about so much here in Michigan and tried our best to do again in 2020, the way we did in 2018, local organizers. Stacy believes in it, I believe in it. And I think that we all need to work hard to develop more local organizers so that we are ready to do this work um, in all of our communities, all over our state, we cannot ignore any corner of the state. Um, Stacy believes it strongly and so do I. So that's, that's one lesson from Stacy. Lesson number two is you don't let any lie, disinformation, challenge to authority go unresponded to. They responded to each and everything, even the smallest thing that looked like it m might not even matter, has the potential to grow into a bigger thing and become a problem unless you respond to it as quickly as you can. And this is one of the reasons we are um, adding some folks to the team here at the MDP to help us respond to the disinformation that you're seeing that we always see, um, not only on Twitter where the president can't tweet anymore, thank God, but um, all, all over, you know, that sort of disinformation and to push back on the Republicans in the legislature. This Republican legislature, frankly, gets too much of a free pass and can't anymore. So we are now more aggressively than we ever have before at the party going to be pushing back on the Republicans in this state legislature, supporting the Democrats in the legislature who are doing the right thing. And maybe not quite as publicly, but quietly also pushing back on the Democrats who don't quite do the right thing. Because I also believe that's part of my job is to have that conversation. That's never gonna be a conversation I will have publicly because that is not my job to tear down Democrats in public. We do have Democrats who do that. 
you know who they are, but I don't do that. But I will have those conversations in private with folks about this is what we expected of you when we elected you. This is what we think you should be doing. So watch for your party to do more of that. Watch for us to support ways for you all to do that locally. More talking points, more suggestions for ways to respond and be responsive. Um, we're going to be less quiet as a party um, than we have been. I mean, we were already a little noisy, but we're going to get even more noisy going forward. Hello, uh, Lamora. I'm Bob Hi. Anderson. From the, I'm secretary of the Marquette County Democratic Party from the Upper Peninsula. And want, we're rural, and we were the only county that went Democrat, uh, you know, north of probably Mount Pleasant. Uh, and we always go Democratic. Um, and we would like to know what plans do you have to do the outreach we need to do in the Upper Peninsula and the Northern Lower Peninsula. Um, and how can we better try to recapture some of the Catholics that we have lost over the years uh, to the Republicans? Uh, I was part of the leadership of Michigan Catholics for Biden, and we did a couple of really good things during the election. So how can we uh, try to recapture some of those Catholics should we develop a new organization called uh, Michigan Catholics for Whitmer and Nessel and Benson. How, how do you do that at the state party level, reaching out to Catholics and hi. other people of religious backgrounds? Hi, hi Bob. Th thanks for being here. I love that you are, you're here from, from, from up north. I will say, yes, you, you guys are our are, are stalwart Dem County and we appreciate you up there. Um, we are proud of the work that we have started to do in, in the Northern Lower and in the Upper Peninsula. You know, as you know, we've got an organizer um, up North, we've got an organizer in the Northern Lower. We look at, we're looking to grow that group of Project 83 organizers even more to continue to work with counties to, to, to move the needle um, more blue. Um, we saw some great movement in 2020. We didn't win counties, but we went um, bluer than we had um, in the past. And that really has to be much of our goal. It's, it's incremental in many ways. We're not going to magically flip um, counties. We've got to start the work and continue the work that we need to do. And the, th the thing I think that is so important is conversations, right? And I think that that's probably what Catholics for Biden did a lot of is talking to people about um, the, the importance of participating in this election. And, and here's the thing that I started saying in 20 and, and continues to be true now. Um, there is there is is a moment here in, in this country where you, you have to decide as a person and a voter who you are and what you want out of your country and out of your state. And if your decision and if your conversation with these voters is simply about one issue or another and not about the state of this nation and its place in the world, the state of this state and its place in, the, in this place in the nation, you're losing an opportunity. That's the conversation I think folks need to be having. And if folks are not ready to have that conversation across the aisle with their democratic friends and help us make it better, then we're likely not gonna get them. Like some of these people that you've seen, they're not gonna come over and be Democrats. You, you saw these people uh, attacking our, our capital. Like we're, we're not gonna get them, but there are plenty of people who are not that who do not want that, who do not believe that is the right way to be Americans or Michiganders. And those are the folks we need to find and have conversations with and reach hands across to and help become better. I think the idea of Catholics for Whitmer, Catholics for Benson, Catholics for Nestle, Catholics for Democrats um, is a really great idea. And we should talk about how we can help support you all in doing that work. And I'd love, Bob, to hear some of the things that you all did as Catholics for Biden and maybe think about how we turn that into programming here, specifically in Michigan for our Michigan elected officials. So let's talk, please. Please shoot me an email. I'm Lavor Barnes at michigandems.com, easy to find. Um, and let's let's start talking about how we move forward with, with some of those ideas that you have. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bob. And now I'm gonna click someone else here. Uh, Gail Summerhill. Gail, can you hear me? I had to unmute. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I did. Uh, hi, Lavora. Hi, hi, everyone. Gail. Thank you, um, everyone, for putting this on. I um, put a lot of uh, my information in the chat, 
and I wanted to turn my time over to to Shay Duckworth that Debbie was uh, kept referencing. Um, one of the things that's in the chat, I did uh, ask that we work together because under Ipsy Can I Share, we have formed grassroots and have accomplished a lot of things in Ypsilanti yeah. as it relates to educating and empowering people. And we know from statistics that it didn't make a difference in um, the election cycle in Washtenaw County. Okay. But I want to stay okay. back and give my time to uh, Trisha Duckworth. Thank you, Gail. And thank you for all the work you've done. Thank you. Kathleen, can you promote Trisha uh, Duckworth to, uh, or yeah, Trisha Duckworth so that yeah. she can answer her question? Hello, hello everyone, and um, good afternoon. Well, good morning, I guess, is what we'd be saying. Um, I don't have a question. I just have a really quick comment. Um, and I come to you all this morning with feelings of being traumatized, triggered, super saddened, even angry, um, yet I still have hope. So many things to say, but I will say this. My heart goes out to everyone, including Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, who had to deal with that very traumatic experience. The world watched an insurrection was something like the movie Olympus Has Fallen. How could this happen? I say this with all due respect. It happened because people's privilege didn't fathom the possibility of it. And racism made sure that this insurrection would happen and that from the inside out. Now, I'd be wrong not to mention that this evil and hatred we've all seen has been a reality for us, African descendants, for 400 plus years. Unmuted. Terrorized. Video, so you're good. Beat, brutalized, lynched, hung, murdered, and much more. And many of us have and continue to look away. The plan moving forward must be understanding the foundation of America and how we will end the effects of racism and white supremacy with people in positions of power. America as a whole felt the effects of racism and the terror that we as African descendants face daily. Now that we are, now what are we going to do about it? Whatever we do, we must unite and we must do it together and we must act fast. It is not a Democrat or Republican thing. It is a human decency thing. And we must stand together. Even within the Democratic Party, there are issues that we need to deal with to come together to unite as one and fight this fight. But we've got to get real about race. And that should be a primary uh, focus and agenda of the Democratic Party as well. I thank you all and, and um, for this time to speak. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for speaking. Thank, thank you, you for that. OK, Susan. Good morning. Happy New Year. Thank you for recognizing my question. Um, Lavora, you know, we have been doing the work, we in Washington County, and I look back at, at Mary and Chris and I, who've been in this for the long haul. Mm -hmm. We just keep doing the work. But I appreciate the accolades that you've uh, given to us in Washington County. And from an outsider perspective, what do you think some things that you have been doing? I don't know where that's coming from. Uh, what are some things? Really is good to see everyone. Someone needs to mute. Everyone, uh, actually, uh, My question's in the chat room, too, if it's easier to, to What reach. are some of the things that you all that, are doing well? Uh, yeah, uh, and yeah. what do you think we need to still work like, on? Uh, yeah, again, from your outside uh, perspective, you see all of the parties across the state. We just one keep one working here. That. Thank you, Thank Susan. You. So one, one of the things, you have several things going for you. Um, one of the biggest things that you do that I talk to other county parties about is, frankly, your precinct delegate program. Um, that work that you all do at the precinct level is unlike almost any other county. Um, Oakland also has a strong precinct delegate program, um, but, but this program that you all have built is stellar. Um, and I think that we, we could export some of the things that you all have put together in terms of precinct organization 
um, to other counties that would make a huge difference, particularly like in, in all of the elections, statewide and, and others, but particularly on the local level. Number two, um, your elected officials are as involved as any I have ever seen in the state in your work as a party. And that's a big deal. Um, and I think that you know one of the things that we might ask our elected officials here in Washington to do is have conversations with their friends who are elected officials other places and help them understand the value of involving themselves in their county and local party work, um, helping to support it, frankly, helping to fund it. Um, because this work is so vital to, to getting them elected, getting others elected to join them, and so many folks don't actually join um, and participate in the in the party locally. So those those are the things that I I talk about all the time as I talk about what happens in Washtenaw, and I think that you guys should um, think about uh, and continue to think about ways to export that good work um, to other counties across the state. Thank you, Lavor, and I appreciate that plug for uh, the funding part from our elected. Exactly. we got to work on that. It's Thanks again. so important to, to, to fund it. it. None of this works without a little bit, at least a little bit of money, right? I Thank also you. see um, in the chat, I saw someone asking a question about door knocking, um, which I've now lost, but I think the question was, do I regret not door knocking um, this campaign? And we did, we did door knock first of all. The, the Biden campaign had very clearly said from the top that they did not believe it was safe to door knock. And, and um, those of you who know me know that I, I come from field. I believe very strongly in field. Um, and I believe that the way we win elections is to have conversations with voters. And I love the digital work that we did. I love the phone calls that we did. But we were missing, in my opinion, so many voters because we didn't have a phone number for them and because they didn't have access to, frankly, internet to get on our Zoom. Um, and so we undertook to do a paid canvas um, that was paid for strictly by the Michigan Democratic Party, separate from the Biden campaign and the coordinated campaign, so that we could start door knocking before the coordinated campaign and the Biden campaign were ready to door knock. Um, I don't know how to win, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how to win an election where you don't talk to the voters where they are, which is in their homes. Um, so, so we did door knock. I would have loved to door knock earlier. I think that door knocking, um, this entire cycle would have made a difference, particularly for, for down ballot work across the state. Um, it just wasn't safe or smart to, to do it. And when we finally figured out and found a vendor who understood how to do it safely with PPE, with social distancing, with yeah. training for the canvassers, we did it. But um, uh, you're right, we've, we've got to knock doors. It's such yeah. an important part what of what we do. Put it in there? Um, anything else, Kathleen, you have other questions? I think Lisa had a question. Lisa, did, did you type it or? Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, my question to Lavora is everything you have said is spot on. I have, um, uh, the Michigan Democratic Party does want to be the big tent. I'm sorry, I'm feeling um, um, emotional because all our elected leaders, everything you have said is so true because as I've done my in environmental work, I know that anytime I have a question, I can reach out to any of my elected leaders at any level of government, and I'll get a thoughtful response, whether it's from them directly or from one of their staffers who's ever most appropriate. And I know that it is so not true across the nation because I do work with people in other states. Um, and I don't want to lose them. And um, the events that have happened last week have made me more emotional. I can't even type a correct sentence with correct syntax. Um, um, but, but, but I don't want them to take it lightly because I feel very much over four years, we've kind of become a frog in the, in the pot. And there's a little more and a little more and a little more. And I don't know. I, and, and I think the awareness that this really is serious, especially when Pelosi finally said they've taken the new codes away from Trump, that was a relief. I, I finally slept last night again. Um, uh, but I'm concerned about the in, inauguration. I don't think it should be an outdoor event. I'm afraid of snipers. I'm just afraid that we can't even get going beyond January 20th because the, the threat is very much alive. And I think the threat is going to be very much alive when um, Congress reconvenes. I don't think Debbie Dingell is going to be safe. So that's a concern. Um, but then I have this, so I have an admiration for the bravery, the fact that they all showed up at 
3 a.m. and finish that electoral vote. Yay. So Big Tent, what we're doing to the outside world to, to tell people, you know, we are the Big Tent. We're the safety net. We've got your backs covered. So great. On this other hand, um, I have been, over the last two years, witness to a couple events within our Michigan Democratic Party that, that shook me at my very root. And I did not know whether I was in a room full of Democrats or Republicans. Um, the Rules Committee I attended where they try to curtail um, reporting out by not videoing, by not recording. Um, when I saw that whole transaction happen, because I was in the room, it, 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 it was earth shaking. When I heard reported back from a caucus that I worked with, when they asked for a membership to the, into the uh, Southern uh, uh, District C Committee, the SCC, and they were told that that group was d diverse enough, that shook me too. So, Lavora, as you go forward in the next year, um, I'm hoping that the message we have out in the world is honored within our own internal mechanisms of the Michigan Democratic Party, because I think that there's a disconnect. And, and I think it's probably one you inherited it. So I'd like to find out, you know, whether there's an awareness within the party that-, that, that Oh, that Lisa, yes, there's an awareness. There's an absolute awareness. And I will tell you that, that uh, let's, let's start with that, that rules question. Um, it, it came up, at a state central committee meeting and then the rules committee dealt with it, this question of recording uh, meetings. And it came from a place of frustration um, and anger because we had spent so many years fighting inside the party amongst ourselves um, and people felt threatened and mistreated by fellow Democrats who um, you know, threw cameras in their faces and threatened to put them on Facebook when they disagreed with them um, and who, who they felt mistreated by. Um, I didn't agree with it. Uh, and as you saw, we went through the rules committee and we, you know, even before it got to the rules committee, I issued a letter to all of our chairs that said, you know, cause the rule was you had to have the permission of the chair in order yeah. to write. So I sent a letter to all the chairs that said, you have my permission, right? right. So, and, and then that was done. Um, so the, what we have to fix, Lisa, and I think this is what you're saying is this disconnect we have inside the party and the division that we have inside the party. And I have been trying my best to run the fairest party I can here to try to help people understand that this is not an us against them. I said over and over again, there is no enemy, but if there is an enemy, it's not in this room with us. It's not us. It's out there. Um, but so often, and I think some of you on this call have felt it, it does sometimes feel like the enemy's inside. Um, and we need to help folks who um, are, are feeling like the enemies inside feel like they have a safe place in our party because we are a big tent and this is a safe place to be. Um, I think that, that uh, um, the, the story around, it wasn't state central, it was the executive committee um, where some folks asked to add folks to the executive committee. I have been told many, many times that the executive committee is too big and yet I'm also being asked to add people to the executive committee. Um, and, you know, like anybody pushed up against a wall, I don't always react calmly. Um, and in that moment, I, w I felt pushed up against a wall to add people to an executive committee that I had also been told was already too big. Um, please know that this next executive committee is going to be A, a different size and B, a different makeup um, if I'm reelected as chair of this party. Um, I believe very strongly in the diversity of this party. Uh, you don't have to just look at me to know that. You can watch me work to know that. Um, I believe it strongly and I will continue to fight for, for that diversity inside this party. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa, Thank for you. saying it. Thank you. Hi, I thought I unmuted in one place, but not in another. This is Teresa Reed. Hi, Lavora. Hi, Teresa. How Hi. are you? So good to see you here. Too. So um, now I've muted you. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Um, I have one real quick practical question and then one uh, more um, uh, sustained question about tone and strategy. Uh, the quick practical question is just probably something I should know, but who, uh, how does the Michigan, how does a, uh, the chief of the Michigan State Police get appointed? How does he get his job or she? And is that a pressure point for us? I was alarmed by what I was hearing from Dana Nessel yeah. about of the infiltration of the Michigan State Police. So I'm curious about that. And then also something that Debbie said really 
concern me and raise flags. And of course, like everybody here, I love Debbie, but I was, I was, um, she said about um, not wanting to do something to anger the other side, not wanting to make a strategy to, you know, implement a strategy that would cause greater division. And this to me is, you know, um, Neville Chamberlain and Hitler. <laughs> you know, this is, it, we're, in, we're, we're appeasing people who can't be appeased and who, you know, appeasement to them is like, is like there, it puts them on steroids. So I'm concerned about that. And um, I want to hear from you. What I really want to hear from you is that we're not going to appease the other side. <laughs> and that worry about making people mad is not going to drive strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, first, I think, and somebody will have to check me and we might be able to just do, do a quick Google. This is how I get answers. Um, I think that the state police, the head of the state police is appointed by the governor. Um, but we should probably double check me on that because I am not positive about that. Um, in terms of angering the other side, I don't quite see how you get any more angry than those folks were um, who, who stormed our Capitol. And it exactly. is absolutely not my job as chair of this party to, to try not to anger them. I think you all have heard me anger them. Um, and their response to me is also angry. Um, so no, you heard me say earlier, it's our intention as a state party, um, if I continue to lead it, to be more aggressive in our pushback on Republicans, particularly those in elected office. Um, this behavior is not acceptable and it cannot stand. And if they aren't willing to step up and say that people are, you know, I called on them before, you know, they're racists. They're clearly anti-American, they're clearly anti-Michigan, they're clearly anti-woman. And if they don't do something about those members of their party who continue to behave that way, then we will continue to call them out on it um, as much as we can and as loud as we can. Um, so yeah, Teresa, I, I didn't hear the Congresswoman say that. I think that she probably just wants to continue to get some work done in Congress and is probably um, very much focused on making sure that we can um, do the work of Congress and um, while remaining safe. But Absolutely. They, they, they are angry. They will continue to be angry. And we certainly aren't going to be um, keeping quiet about that. But you should know, Teresa, in the chat, um, someone from Midland is asking about precinct delegate work and what specifically Washtenaw has done. I think you all, as the precinct committee, precinct organizing committee, are best suited to answer that rather than me. So please make sure we get an answer um, to help the folks in Midland, because it sounds like they very much want to replicate some of the terrific work you guys have done. Um, I sent them, the them my email and I'll connect them so that Perfect. they uh, okay. we have that conversation. That's good. Thank Look you. forward to it. Uh, Lavora, there are still lots of hands up to ask you questions, but I think we're going to need to go on with our program. So perhaps those people whose hands are up now uh, can wait um, another 10 minutes to come to the general discussion and they'll have a chance to say something. So and also know that and invite me back. Um, if okay. you want to do a Q&A <laughs> with me, invite me back. I will come back and I will, I will stay and answer questions. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to I'm happy to be here. You, you guys are our family. And if you've got questions I can answer, I want to answer them. Thank you very much, Laura. We appreciate so much what you shared with us today. My pleasure.